Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and this is part 17 of our tutorial series on creating a point-and-click adventure game in Unity. In our last video, we took a look at some options for how we're going to start setting up our switches and tracking our game states, and we decided the best way to do that was going to be to use um, components in Unity to really take advantage of Unity's system and to keep everything kind of tied together where it belongs. So today, let's start by uh, creating our first switch. Now to do this, we're going to create a C-sharp script and we're going to go create C sharp. We're going to call this switcher, actually. I had kind of, um, when we had first discussed all of these different types of interactables, I had called it a switcher. Thought maybe we could go back to just calling it a switch, which is really what it is. But unfortunately, we also in Unity and in C sharp have switch statements. So in order to avoid confusion there, I'm going to add the ER and make this switcher. So we create this script, and let's jump into mono develop. And we want to keep it, or we want to change mono, mono behavior here to interactable. Because we want it to inherit from our interactable abstract class, particularly this virtual interact uh, function. We can delete start and update for now. And we're going to add one variable into this, and that's going to be a public bool called state. Um, as we said in the last video, most states are just going to be yes or no sort of situations, open, shut, locked, unlocked, etc. There will be situations where we have more than one or more than two um, settings for a state, but for now we're just going to start with the bool and this is how we're going to be um, determining what state and a uh, particular prop is in. So in addition to that, we're going to override our interact. So we're going to say public override and it should give us interact there. I'm going to clean this up for my formatting here. And we're going to get rid of the base interact because all that is is just saying um, if we go back to our interactable we see we're just literally debugging a line saying interacting with this object. We don't need that. What we are going to do however is say that whenever we interact with a switcher we want to change the state. So in this case it's just going to be from state to whatever the other state is. And we can do that simply by saying state equals not state. So if state is true it will then become false and vice versa. We'll save this and this is technically all we need for our game. If I now go back into Unity here we can go to our room and we'll go down, we've got stuff on both, uh, we've got the image viewer on our sphere and we've got the um, 3D observer on our cube. So we're actually going to go into this corner box, which if we zoom out, is over here that we added in the room when we were looking at adding more nodes. We're going to go to our can prop that we put on top of this box. And this one we're going to add the switcher component to. And so we see we've got obviously the script, and then we've got this Boolean state that we can uh, kind of watch and see. So if I click save here now and I click play, I'll expand this a bit. Oh. Um, we can look around our room, go over to this box, and if I click on this node, we move to it. Camera's a little bit far away from it actually, but we can adjust that later. Now if I click on the can, we move to the can and view the can. Again, that's a little bit far out. We'll um, We'll fix that in a minute. And then if I click the can, we see down here that the state changes. And I'll do that a couple more times. Um, state is obviously false, and then true, false again. So we can, you know, click that ad nauseum and switch it back and forth. And that's really, technically speaking, all our game needs to be able to start keeping track of these now. If something else is interested in this state, it can look at the switcher, look at the state, and say, oh, is it true or false right now? However, um, this would A, make for a very short video today, but B, also, it doesn't really give our um, player any feedback, especially if I click away from, on the hierarchy here, down just on something else, um, so that we're seeing the can a little bit more clearly here, I can click on it, and you don't, you don't get any feedback that something has happened, and there might be a case where you want that to happen, where, you know, you're trying to keep something a little subtle, but in general, it's really a good idea, just in design in general, to give your player feedback when something happens. So we're going to look at, um, not the final way that we're going to um, have our game respond to our player, but a way to quickly kind of say, listen, um, we've changed a state and we need to show that a state has changed. And we're going to do that with another script. 
I'm gonna pause this again and I'm going to come down here and I'm gonna actually create a new folder inside of our interactables folder. And I'm gonna call this reactors because what I want is for there to be this um, another component that basically tells an object if your state has changed, react to it in some way that the player can see. So now I'm going to create inside of that folder a C-sharp script and I'm gonna call it state reactor very, you know, fairly obvious to what it's doing. It reacts to when states change. We're going to double click and open this up. And this is actually going to be um, an abstract class as well. So we're going to make it a public abstract class and it's going to inherit from mono behavior because there's, there might be, a, there's a variety of different ways we could react. We could change our color. We could change our entire material. We could change position. We could change size. A lot of different things so this is going to be kind of the base class that then we're going to create these sort of variants on um, the other thing is that for right now we're just going to do this on this can which has the switcher on it and i think that's a good way to start this because we're actually going to change ultimately how we do this um, this sort of response um, ultimately we're going to probably use um, some delegates and events to be able to um, add listeners so that when something changes we have another component listening for it rather than having to tell it outright it's going to make our lives a lot easier but for right now what we can simply say is up here we're going to say require component type of switcher because we just want to make sure that when we're adding this state reactor structure we have right now that there's a switcher there too that it can listen for or be told from really so now we're going to Yes, we're going to delete all of this and we're going to create a switcher variable and we're just going to call it switcher. And this right here is why I changed it and added the ER because if I had just said switch here, you would see that it is that is a um, that is a uh, statement that we have in C sharp. So we can't just be calling things switches. So we're going to add a switcher and we're actually going to make that a protected variable. Um, protected is a little bit different from public and private. It's um, it's not going to appear in our inspector and it's not going to be able to be, able to be accessed from anywhere. However, when we make our child um, classes from this, when we make things that inherit from state reactor, they'll still be able to get the switcher, which is going to be important for us. And then in addition to this, we're going to create two quick um, functions in here. One is going to be a protected void and awake function. I'm making that protected as well because we're going to adjust that based on the um, what's inheriting from it. And all this is going to do is say switcher equals get component switcher. And this is why we're making sure we're requiring that component because we want to make sure we're getting it here. And then lastly, we're going to say public virtual void react. This is a reactor class, so we want it to react. And actually, I should make this one virtual as well before I get ahead of myself, because that's um, how we're going to be able to override these. So for public virtual void react, for our abstract class, we don't really need anything in here, but I like to put in just a quick debug so that if we ever left the base, um, this base function in here, we, we would know that it's happening. And all I'm going to say for this is name names state is and then I'm gonna have it grab the switcher grab the state from that switcher and tell us that so it'll basically when we when we react it's going to say oh this object is currently in this state and I'm gonna add that into our switcher class so right here we'll say um, state and then we'll say if get component state reactor reactor does not equal null so basically so long as there's a state reactor on this switcher then get component state reactor dot react so if I were able to put a state reactor component onto our can, 
we would be able to click it and it would now debug log this when we clicked it. However, because this is abstract, we can't actually add it to any mono behaviors. We need to make a specific uh, class that can be added. We're going to do that right now by creating one more C -sharp script in Unity. And we're going to call this one color reactor. We'll open that up in mono develop. And this is going to inherit inherit from state reactor. Uh, reactor. There we go. And for this one, we are going to delete both of these again. We already have our switcher being taken care of in state reactor, but we do want a couple other things in here. We're going to have a public color called active and a public color called inactive. These are going to be what we, because what we're going to do here is we're really going to just change the color of our material when we react to the state change. So I want one for when it's inactive and one for when it's active. In addition, we are going to need a access to that color that the object is. And for that, we need to actually jump back into Unity for one second and take a look here. Because we've got our can prop, and this is what we can actually add that color reactor to right now. However, what we need is, we notice here, we don't have the mesh renderer. Our mesh renderer is down in the can model. So what we need to do is get the mesh renderer from can model. And we can do that pretty easily because the only other thing we have in here is the camera position as a child, which is just a transform. So we can get this pretty easily by just saying, get component in child mesh renderer. If you had multiple um, objects as a um, child of this node, you might, you'll have to figure out a little bit um, more precise way of getting it. But for right now, we can do this pretty simply in our prototype here. So we're going to say mesh renderer mesh. And then in void, oh, sorry, um, protected override awake, we're going to say, we're going to keep the base awake because we still want to make sure we're getting that switcher. But then we're also, after we do that, we're going to say um, mesh equals get component mesh renderer. Or sorry, get component in children mesh renderer. And so that will be sure to get that mesh from the can model itself. The last thing we need to do now is update our React script. So we can do that as well by saying public override React. And here, we're going to, instead of doing our base React, we're going to delete that altogether. And we're going to say if switcher, and you can see we can get that switcher because it's protected and then we are inheriting. If switcher um, dot state, and so that's going to say that's equivalent to saying if switcher dot state is true. Oops, don't need that slash. If switcher dot state, then we want mesh dot material dot color to equal our active color. Else, so if it's not true, then it must be false. Then that material dot color should be the inactive color. Very sim very kind of simplistic, but it's like I say, this is just for our prototype so that we can really see that we're affecting the world as we do this. So now if we go back into Unity, we see we've got our active and inactive colors here. We've got to define both of those. So right now we can kind of decide if we want our can. We'll consider this green color to be its inactive color. So I'm just going to go into here, into our inactive color. Make sure your alpha is all the way up, otherwise you're, um, you may get some funky results, depending on, particularly depending on the material you're using. We might be okay because we're just using the basic shader, but if you are in a transparent shader, your object could suddenly disappear on you. So I'm going to keep that green, 100% you know, green here. For our active, we'll make it something a little bit brighter than green. So we'll, we'll go up and make it like a yellow, nice bright yellow even a little bit brighter. There we go. 
So that's our active and inactive colors now. And if we hit save and we hit play, what should happen now is um, we can go over here, click on our can, zoom into the can, and now when we click here, we see that the state is currently inactive and the color is the inactive color, which is kind of happenstance right now because um, I chose to make it match. Um, but now when we click for the active color, it should become our active color. It becomes our yellow and state is is um, true as well. So state is considered active and it is the active color. If we click again, it goes back. Back and forth, back and forth. Now, like I was saying, we're a little bit zoomed out far. So before I finish this video, I am going to quickly fix that. And that's pretty easy to do. We just have to take our camera position object. Um, if you grab the z-axis, that's like the direction that the camera is pointing. And so for both of these, I'm just going to drag these in pretty close, actually, because um, it's uh, we want to really be zoomed in on those objects. Save that. Hit play once more just to check and see that our view is a little bit better now. Click there. That's nice and close to the table. Let me click again. Beautiful. Oh, had a little bit of an extra click there, I think. And then we click back and forth. We can click to change our colors. So that is how you um, create our basic switcher. Now, obviously right now, like I've said, this is very self-contained. We're just kind of having our switcher talk to our model and change how it looks and what the, um, the kind of game state is. What I think we're going to want to do in the future is, um, like I say, make this so that other objects can actually listen um, for the change. For example, say we had a light bulb on the other side of the room that we wanted to turn on when we touch this can. Um, we could in th do what we're doing right now and kind of have another object tied into our switcher and have the switcher tell that object what to do when that happens, but I think it will be better overall for our game if we kind of reverse it and say, this thing over here should listen for a change here. And um, that's gonna get, get us started into our prerequisite class as well as um, diving a little bit into events and delegates and how those can help our game. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.